Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and today we're going to be unboxing month three with Southern Skeins. So this will be the last unboxing that I do with them. I am going to continue the subscription through the end of the year. However, I will be canceling in January just because I can't justify the cost, but I'm not going to be doing any more reviews for the rest of the year. I'm going to leave November and December clear for doing my holiday crafting, vlogmas, other activities. Uh, I did order an advent calendar, so I'm going to be busy for the rest of the year. We will be starting with the unboxings again at the beginning of the year. As with all of my previous subscription box reviews and unboxing to date, so far, Nobody sponsored me. I'm not getting any kickbacks for any of these. These companies don't know who I am most of the time until I start unboxing their boxes. So without further ado, let's take a look at last month. So last month, our extras are all tucked in here still. We got a little stitch marker here, a chamomile tea from stash a tapestry needle and a button badge which is 100 percent true of most of my days we also received this absolutely gorgeous yarn which like i said when i unboxed it while not seasonally appropriate 100 percent carry colors so the speckling in this is actually purple. There is quite a bit of speckling in there. I did opt to do a crocheted pattern this time. Last month I did, or the previous month I had done a knit shawl. This time I did a crocheted shawl. And I already have the pattern picked for this month. Uh, as I had said, you know, this is going to be going up on Saturday. I'm now filming at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. I was hoping my mail would get here in time to film yesterday. And I spent all day yesterday waiting to be able to film the unboxing of this month's yarn subscription. However, it did not get here until 8.15 last night. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure what's going on. Well, I got the notification it had been delivered at 8.15. The tracking did not update. I stopped checking it at like six o'clock because by then I was eating dinner and I'm like, mm. So I don't know if it didn't get to my local post office until late and they ran it out last night or if it got missed when my mail was being delivered because we did have mail delivery earlier in the day. I don't know what happened. So I ended up not being able to film yesterday. So I'm like trying to get stuff done today and, and, and getting ready to be able to film because I really want to kick up this month's yarn and start working on stuff because I had that little bit of extra time to be able to go ahead and pick a pattern. We did get a pattern this month. It is for a cup cozy. Uh, I never remember to, I've got a number of cup cozies that I have made over the years or received as gifts over the years. And I have never once remembered to keep them in my car and use them when I go out for a cup of coffee. So I'm going to skip doing the cup cozy. Mm. I drink one about every month, and for some reason, I don't drink soda very often, but for some reason, I just really wanted to cheer wine today. Um, yeah, so the uh, pattern cost $3. I looked at a couple of other Cup Cozy patterns that were paid for patterns. Well, there are a number of free patterns, as always. The average for the six that I pulled up were about $3.15, so that was right on for the average cost. Our extras this month is this adorable little stitch marker. So spooky. So spooky. We got a pomegranate raspberry tea from Stash, which by the way, if you have not tried this, this is absolutely amazing hot or cold. And we also got this little felt witch hat that we can put on the cup cozy because it matches this month's yarn. This month's yarn is Bewitched. 
and this is their bulky single. Now I am getting the not a sock yarn club. So I'm not getting sock yarn. We've had DK weight for the first two months. Now we have a bulky weight. This is a bulky weight single, which I love working with the roving style yarns and the, the big ploofy single style yarns. It started with a uh, gift of Malbrigo back when I very first started knitting. And I've been in love with this style of yarn forever. So it's always so soft against the skin. There's literally zero itch ever with this style of yarn. I don't know why, especially on these nicer bases. But this is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. There's 75 yards, 100 grams per hank. And once again, we are so in carry colors. We've got purple and pink. So we've had red and black, blue and purple, and now purple and pink. So very happy with the colors that I have received so far in my Southern skeins. We've got my something that can be used as my football team colors. We've got something that can be used as just a beautiful shawl because carry colors. And now we have something that is going to be a cowl, I believe, once again, in carry colors. So I can't complain with the colors whatsoever. Everything has been very cool toned so far with them, though I have looked at other yarns from Southern Skeins. Once again, we have been getting the subscription. I've been getting the T-Dotto subscription where we get the mini every month. I got the mini mini for the year. And we've gotten some corals, some reds, some warmer tones over the course of the year. So this isn't... Uh, I don't know why it was just worked out. Everything's been cool tone. It was very cool tone red to, uh, two months ago, but everything has been very cool tone. Now, this is not what you would consider traditional Halloween colors whatsoever, but I do love the little coordination. Then, and then of course, the stitch marker also matches the little felty, which is just adorable. I'll probably put this on a pin back. This a little. Um, but that's a me thing. Uh, once again, like I said, I just, I'm not going to use that. That's meant to go on the, the coffee cozy. I'm not going to make a coffee cozy. So especially not with this because this just needs to be around my face. This just needs to be around my face. Uh, on average, hand dyed yarns cost between 22 and $25 right now. Uh, like I've said, I think at the beginning of the last subscription box I did, which was Yarnable, uh, the cost of hand-dyed yarns has been slowly going up in the U.S. I know in Canada and the U.K. it already went up. So the estimated value for this would actually be $22 to $25. And I believe I did my estimate based on $22. However, Southern Skeins does appear to sell most of their bulky weight between $18 and $20. So we do have that. Uh, the cost of the box I got is $45 a month, and that does include shipping. I got the not a sock yarn plus the extra skein, which is why I'm getting two skeins. By not getting sock yarn, I did want to ensure that I was going to have enough yarn to make choices about whatever I made, regardless of if it's bulky or if it was a DK weight. I was able to get two very large shawls. This, once again, has not been blocked yet. The other one is finally soaking. But by the time this is done blocking, you know, we're going to have a nice wingspan on that. And it's going to drape quite a bit once the stitch gets loosened up a little bit. So two skeins was definitely the right call for me. And how I use yarn and what I'm going to want to do with it. But you do have the option of... One skein, two skeins, one skein with a bag, or two skeins with a bag. So you do have a lot of different options with the subscription box. Southern Skein does also have a sock yarn subscription box. So depending on where your weight preferences exist, you have options with the subscription box, which I am always a massive fan of. All of the yarns so far, I would say, would be crochet or knitter friendly. It really doesn't matter, even though none of them are solids. You know, this would crochet up beautifully. I was looking at a Queen Anne's lace pattern. Um, I have a scarf already that looks very similar and in, in a very similar yarn, actually. Uh, so I, I did opt 
I believe for a cowl, a split neck cowl. So we'll, we will be knitting this. It will be in a textured stitch instead of a stockinette stitch. So it will create texture with the single ply and with the colors. And I'll get a lot more wear out of this. So with a single ply yarn, a lot of times you don't want to do anything that's going to, like I say, the, the wear areas that are going to create uh, wear points, pilling, things like that, because this is not spun very tightly. You're not going to have that durability where the fibers are encased in the spin of the yarn. So I do prefer to do things like shawls, scarves, hats, things that aren't going to get rubbed a whole lot um, from wear with yarns like this. So I did say uh, their cost is $18 because I think that's what it is, but they do have two different prices, $18 or $20. So we could be off $4 on the real cost of this. Uh, based on my normal estimates, the cost of this box would be $52.65, $5 dollars for the stitch marker, $0.50 cent for the witch's hat, uh, $3.15 for the pattern, and then $44 for the yarn. So I did say $22. So we, I went with the low end estimate of what yarn costs when you buy from an, ind an independent dyer or an LYS quality yarn, which this definitely obviously is. Their cost using the estimates for the marker and the felty, because they obviously aren't selling those on the website, they're extras for the subscription box, is $44.50. So we're 50 cent off of the actual cost, but once again, that $45 does include shipping, which would be approximately $8.50, I believe, from where they are to where I am. So we are getting an $8 discount just in the shipping alone on that. Um, I've seen a couple of people saying that they don't see the value in the LYS yarns. And this is something I kind of want to address with this. I decided to do this back to back with Yarnable because I really love indie hand dyed yarns. You'll see quite a few of them, uh, you know, kind of here and here in my stash. Uh, we do have a lot of big box yarns, but I do really, for those special projects, love working with indie dye yarns or specialty dye yarns or those LYS quality yarns. So, um, yes, they're more expensive than what you get at like the big box yarn companies. And there are some amazing, high quality big box yarns out there, but there is something special about the indie dyed and the LYS yarns at times that I think, you know, when you're making that special project for somebody or you're wanting to make something special for yourself, like those are the times where you really want to dive into a specialty yarn sometimes. Uh, they are more expensive. The quality of the wool in these do tend to be higher. Uh, not saying that you can't get a non-itchy wool out of a big box store. I've got plenty. Uh, or the, the durable feeling wools. There are beautiful soft wools on the big box market. Uh, the Red Heart Chic Sheep was one of the nicest big box yarns I had ever used. And that was a uh, collaboration with Marley Bird. Uh, you know, there have been things like the Burnett collection with Vicki Howell, and then they went on to continue the Sheepish line even after that collaboration ended. So there have been beautiful big box yarns that are high quality yarns. You are paying about 10 to $15 for 100 grams based on the current pricing of yarn for those when we find them though. So there's still more than a lot of people I think are expecting to pay when they're they're purchasing yarn for a project um i mean i understand i i am very budget friendly when, the reason why i have the collection that i do is i purchase on sale i do purchase from a lot of dyers on sale i do wait for the opportunity to get a discount but i i mean to say categorically they're just not worth it uh, I would say is based on what you want to do with your crafting. Um, I can't say you're wrong because you, you may be right for your own budget. Uh, you may be right for the projects you make. You may be right for you and what you're doing. Um, but that's not a universal truth. 
and say, me saying, you know, for what you're getting, this is worth it, is not a universal truth either. Um, so I'm not trying to condemn with that statement, but make you aware that, you know, this is a different quality, a different breed of fiber. Uh, a lot of these yarns are, are made with a finer micron count wool. So even though it's 100% wool or 80% wool or 70% wool, there's no itching to the wool. Now they're, like I said, big box yarns, there are some that in the, are in that category where, uh, as Gary would say, you know, no undergarments required. Uh, but these are higher quality yarns and those higher quality yarn bases do have a higher cost beyond specialty dyeing, unique, et cetera, kind of things beyond the personal appeal to supporting a small business or working with a dyer. Uh, in the past, I have had custom dyed yarns before sent to me um, that I ordered. Uh, so bear in mind when I'm saying, you know, I think this is worth it. If I went to an LYS to purchase special yarn for something that I'm going to be wearing around my neck, and I was buying this yarn, I would expect to pay, you know, $44 to $50 for two hanks of this yarn. And to get two hanks of this yarn, plus a couple of little extras that are cute, for $45, and it's shipped to my door, and it's a surprise, I get the excitement of it. I think, personally, that's more than worth it. Uh, knowing Dyeing my own yarn and buying my own yarn bases and seeing where the cost of the yarn bases have gone up because, as my new favorite phrase has become, <laughs> life. Uh, a lot of these dyers are under a lot of scrutiny for what they're charging. And I, I have seen some really nasty commentary when it comes to the cost of these independently dyed yarns or small batch dyer yarns. And the the cost has just gone up. Uh, when you are when you run a business dyeing yarn, you can't wait for a sale. Like I've been been lucky because I don't really sell my yarn. I dye for my personal usage. Uh, I'm able to wait until the company I want to order from puts the product I need on a good enough sale for me to purchase. Whereas these dyers are running a business, so in order to have product to sell, they need to purchase and base their cost on what the average is they're spending on supplies. So I, I'm not at all disappointed with what I'm paying or shocked at what the cost is. I'm not surprised at the value of what I'm getting. I have loved everything I've gotten so far. And like I said, with the mini minis that I've been sharing every month this year in the T-Dottle subscription box unboxing, I can tell you right now that Southern Skeins definitely uses a high quality of fiber bases to dye. There's no cheaping out on what they're using. This is so amazing around my neck. I mean, not just no itching, but I would actually think that this had a, uh, like a combed cotton in it. It's so soft and it, it's muggy here. It's been raining. Uh, the la it rained all day yesterday and a little bit this morning. So like it's muggy here. And normally even soft wool feels a little sticky on my neck area. And this is just dreamy. It It's squishy. It's soft. There's zero itch to it. It is 100% something you can wear up against your skin. So hat, scarf, shawls, things like that would be perfect out of these yarns. Um, but I did want to address that because I did see uh, a lot of those comments coming in and some of the responses and emails and messages on Instagram uh, to these last two subscription boxes as they have both been independent dyers. They do cost more than big box style yarns. Uh, there is cost associated in those businesses, you know, in supplies. And as their supplies have gone up, the estimated cost has gone up as well from the actual shops and how I'm having to do my reviews on these because I've seen where we've seen in some cases for some fibers, almost a 50% price increase just on the blank bare yarn from some companies. So 
keep that in mind as you're, as you're, you know, I want to hear your commentary. I want to know what you think about these subscription boxes, but also bear in mind while my truth might not be your truth, your truth might not be a universal truth either. Um, and bearing in mind what you're willing to pay and value are also two separate, uh, things. Uh, to let you in on how I evaluate other forms of subscription boxes as I'm looking at unboxings, um, and particularly things like the makeup subscription boxes. I've got, I do get an Ipsy base bag and I do have the Ipsy collaboration once a quarter box and stuff. And the way I evaluate whether or not I want to put my money into that is if I were going out to buy that product, if I were going out to buy a daytime serum or a lipstick or, uh, you know, an eyeliner, what am I willing to pay to have the best? And what would I be disappointed if I paid for it? And if I can go through like an unboxing on YouTube and see I'm willing to pay $15 $5, $4, $2, and $20 for product. And the box cost me $12. I'll consider using getting that box. If I see a subscription box and you know, like like lifestyle boxes have been really big since uh things went sideways in 2020. Uh, if I look at some of those and go, you know, I would go to Home Goods and buy that for four dollars. I'd get that at Hobby Lobby for two dollars. I can make that myself for nothing because I have the supplies downstairs. I probably that's not a subscription box I'm going to get. So when I see these unboxings, you know, I look at these and evaluate what am I willing to pay, which gives me my personal value for these items. That doesn't mean that if I went to Nordstrom or Williams Sonoma or something like that, I wouldn't see something I buy for five dollars at Home Goods for a hundred dollars at Williams Sonoma. So, as you're watching, not just my videos, but videos in general that are reviewing and sharing an experience with subscription boxes, think about how. While you might not be willing to pay, you know, $20 for a hank of yarn, that's your personal value to it. That's not necessarily the cost value. Um, and, you know, you wait for things to go on sale, things like that, which is why, you know, I say with most subscription boxes, I'm looking for that 20 to 25% off because that's a sale price to me. You don't hit sale price until you hit 20% off. With the indie dyers, I do kind of taper off that ex expectation because they don't have the overhead to offer those kinds of discounts, especially if you're looking at only the yarn value in a subscription box. Uh, for these reviews that I do, um, they don't have the overhead to be able to get the price down too much further in a lot of cases. They're cutting their profit margin very, very slim. And this is a business. They do need to make money to support themselves. So uh, temper <laughs> your responses to some of these with that information or with that in mind, because it, uh, in the past, I have had to remove comments or not allow something to be posted because of how things were uh, negatively expressed when it came to some of these subscription boxes. Uh, I love my big box yarn. I love my inexpensive yarn, but I do also love my indie dye yarn and my higher quality yarn. So uh, think in terms of your value and think of terms also in, in respecting the cost value of certain things because we're not dealing with you know, Red Heart, where I can order a gross case of something and get a 60% discount. We are dealing with a small company that, you know, at any given time, if you custom order something, you may have to wait six months to get 50 hanks of it. Um, I'll get off my soapbox. I just kind of wanted to, to add that here at the end. Uh, please, you know, don't be afraid 
if you have a negative opinion that differs from mine, to share it. Just be respectful about how you're communicating. Uh, and also keep in mind, sometimes when we type things, because it is written word, we're not able to necessarily express our complete intention and what we're saying. So I, I would say I'm happy with this month. Once again, I mean, if she's it would be selling this for $40, I paid $45. My cost is already met in just the yarn. I'm breaking even on that alone because shipping, like I said, would be $8. So I'm actually getting a $3 discount. I will come back after I finish my project with this yarn and do a final thoughts and reviews on this. Uh, I will probably also uh, share some more thoughts on some of the things I have experienced in the last three years of doing these subscription box reviews and some takeaways that I have gotten. You know, I do pay for these. My money is a sunk cost in these. So um, I understand when it comes to where you want to put your money. And that's why I do these reviews. The whole purpose to this was to evaluate and decide whether or not some of these things were worth it. And if they are, who are they worth it to? And we might have to do a separate video dedicated to the conversation of marketing strategies and who is the target market, even with our, within our tiny community, who is the target market for certain kinds of things. So we might have to do that as a separate video at some point, but I did kind of want to start touching my toe in the subject here because there have been some really, uh, with the last group of subscribers, I got some really angry people <laughs> joining in in the discussion some days. So, um, yeah, as always, you guys, please share your experience. Just be respectful and kind. That's all I ask. As always, you guys, I love you. Please take care, and I will see you guys real soon. Bye, guys.